A one square mile island becomes the site of one of the bloodiest battles and some of the most heroic acts of valor during World War II. Well, that should be a movie. Hello, and thank you for watching today's episode of That Should Be a Movie. I'm C.W. Johnson Jr. Today's book I'd like to pitch as a movie is Taro, The Incredible Story of One of World War II's Bloodiest Battles by Robert Sherrod from Skyhorse Press. The Battle of Taro took place mainly on and around the small island of Yeto. It was the first time that U.S. forces had faced serious Japanese opposition to their amphibious landings. General Alexander Vandergrift explained that it was one assault from beginning to end. Of the over 3,600 Japanese on the island, only 17 were taken alive. Civilians on the U.S. home front were shocked that over 3,000 Americans could die on such a small island in only 76 hours. But, as Admiral Chester Nimitz said, Tara knocked down the front door of the Japanese power in the Central Pacific. Robert Serov, a correspondent for both Time and Life magazines, descended into the smell storm. He recorded the Tara campaign from its preparation to the assault on Bieto to the mopping up of the other end of the atoll. His first hand account and interviews with the men of the 27th Army Division and the 2nd Marine Division, even as Japanese bullets struck their bamboo protection, is similar to Joseph L. Galloway's account of the Vietnam Battle of La Durain as recorded in We Are Soldiers. Serod's book also says light on another forgotten aspect of World War II that the U.S. home front wasn't totally united behind the war front. He records a conversation between two Marines who were dodging sniper fire, as they said that they wished that the labor unionist, John L. Lewis, who was leading a coal strike back home, was there. Not so the Japanese could kill, but so they could. The final chapter of his book records his encounters with picketers and other civilians who couldn't understand that the road to victory would be long and costly. I believe a movie about Tarawa would be a fantastic way to remember this period of American history in the honor of the man who paid the ultimate price in Vietnam. One idea I've always had for a movie honoring the bravery of the U.S. military personnel in World War II would be a movie that focuses on all the recipients of medals won in one battle. We had four medals of honor, 46 Navy Crosses, four Distinguished Service Medals, 248 Silver Stars, 21 Legions of Merit, 176 Slayers of Combination, and several Bronze Stars and British Power Awards obtained there, I believe Taro will be a prime candidate for such a movie. The four Medal of Honor recipients were Colonel David Monroe Soap, First Lieutenant Alexander Bonnyman Jr., Staff Sergeant William James Bordelon, and First Lieutenant William Dean Hawkins. The citation for Medal of Honor winner Colonel Soup reads, For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty as commanding officer of all Marine Corps troops and acts against enemy Japanese forces on Mieto Island, Taro Atoll, Gilbert Island, from 20 to 22nd November 1943. Although severely shocked by exploding enemy cells soon after landing at the pier, and suffering from a serious painful leg wound, which had become infected, Colonel Soup furiously exposed himself to the terrific and relentless artillery, machine gun, and rifle fire from hostile sore emplacements. For rallying his hesitant troops by his own inspiring heroism, he gallantly led them across the fringing reefs to charge the heavily fortified island and reinforced our hard pressed thinly held lines. Upon arrival on shore, he assumed command of all landed troops and, working without rest under constant withering enemy fire during the next two days, by his brilliant leadership, daring tactics, and selfless devotion to duty, Colonel Soup was largely responsible for the final de decisive defeat of the enemy and his indomitable fighting spirit reflects great credit on the U.S. Naval Service. The citation for Lieutenant Bonnyman Jr. reads, Acting on his own initiative, when assault troops were pinned down at the far end of the Etho Pier by the overwhelming fire of Japanese sword batteries, First Lieutenant Bonnyman repeatedly defied the blasting fury of the enemy bombardment to organize and lead the besieged men over the long open pier to the beach. Determined to effect an opening of the enemy's strong organized defense line, the following day, he voluntarily crawled approximately 40 yards forward of our lines and placed demolitions in the interest of a large Japanese emplacement as the initial move in his planned attack against the heavily garrisoned bomb-proof installation which was stubbornly resisting despite the destruction early in the action of a large number of Japanese who had been inflicting heavy casualties on our forces and holding up our advance. Directed the placement of demolition charges in both entrances and seized the top by his dauntless fighting spirit Unrelenting aggressiveness, 
Forceful leadership throughout the day's unrelenting violent battle, First Lieutenant Bonnyman inspired his men to heroic effect, enabled them to beat off the counterattack and break the back of the hostile resistance. Resistance in that sector for an immediate gain of 400 yards with no further casualties to our forces in this zone. He gallantly gave his life as far as he captured. The citation for Staff Sergeant Bordelon reads Landing the assault wave under withering enemy fire, which killed all but four of the menaced tractor. Staff Sergeant Bordelon hurriedly made demolition charges, personally put two pillboxes out of action. Hit by enemy machine gun fire just as a charge exploded in his hand, while assaulting a third position, he courageously remained in action, provided himself with a rifle and furnished fire covers for a group of men scaling the seawall. Disregarding his own serious condition, he unhesitatingly went to the aid of one of his demolition men, wounded and calling for help in the water, rescuing this man, another who had been hit by enemy fire, while attempting to make the rescue. Still refusing first aid for himself, he again made up demolition charges and single-handedly assaulted a fourth Japanese machine gun position but was instantly killed when caught in the final burst of the enemy. Staff Sergeant Bordelon's great personal valor during a critical phase of securing the limited beachhead was a contributing factor in the altercation of the island, and his heroic determination throughout three days of violent battle reflects the highest credit upon U.S. naval service. He gallantly gave the life of the first country. One of the most inspirational stories of bravery at Tarawa is that of Lieutenant William Dean Hawkins. When he was a child, he was severely burned, disfiguring his arm and leg. The doctor said he would never use them again, but after a year of his mother massaging his muscles, he was able to walk again. But the scars haunted him for the rest of his life. He was mocked on a swim team. He lost his job with the railroad company because they saw him as a liability, and he was disqualified from the Navy. But he didn't give up, enlisting the Marines as a private. The citation for Lieutenant Hawkins reads, He was the commanding officer of a scout sniper platoon in action against Japanese held Tarawa in the Gilbert Islands. The first to disembark from the Jeep lighter, First Lieutenant Hawkins unhesitantly moved forward on a heavy enemy fire at the end of the Vieto Pier, neutralizing emplacements and coverage of troops assaulting the main beach positions. Fiercely leading his men on to join the forces fighting desperately to gain a beachhead, he repeatedly risked his life throughout the day and night to direct and lead attacks on field boxes and installations with grenades and demolitions. At dawn on the following day, First Lieutenant Hawkins resumed the dangerous mission of clearing the limited beachhead of Japanese resistance, personally initiating an assault on a hostile position fortified by enemy machine guns and crawling forward in the face of withering fire, boldly fired point blank into the loopholes and completed the destruction with grenades. Refusing to withdraw after being seriously wounded in the chest during this skirmish, First Lieutenant Hawkins steadfastly carried the fight to the enemy destroying three more pillboxes before he was caught in a burst of Japanese sail fire and mortally wounded. I believe by focusing on the heroism of Medal of Honor recipients like Lieutenant Hawkins, we can honor all the brave men there. Because, as Captain Ben Owen said, we were talking about medals. We decided that no one should be recommended because everyone should have one. And that's why Tara, by Robert Serrano, should be a movie. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and share this video. And let us know in the comment section what Medal of Honor recipient you think should have a movie.